this man went to jail, a very angry young activist. He came out, someone who was magnanimous, someone who had a depth that he would not, I believe, have gained had it not been in this crucible of suffering. Nelson Mandela and the Archbishop went back a long way. Well before Mandela was released from prison, Desmond Tutu was predicting that he would one day be South Africa's first black prime minister. Did he ever have doubts? There was the fear that uh, the image that had been built up of him in prison um, would be found to be one of, a, of, a, of, of someone with feet of clay. And, and there, were, there were some people who thought that he, he was far more useful in prison than out of prison. There's Mr. Mandela, Mr. Nelson Mandela, a free man. Within weeks of Mandela's release in 1990, he was leading the ANC negotiating team against the apartheid government. It was actually an extraordinary thing. You had to be pinching yourself to say, this is happening. I mean, here are these terrorists meeting with those who just a few weeks previously were hunting them down, had uh, arrested many of them, uh, uh, and others were in exile. At the table, the Archbishop remembers the impact Mandela made, not just on the opposing side, but on his own team. There were those who thought that uh, they should fight to the last drop of blood if it, if it was necessary. Uh, but he had, he has the, the, the credibility, and very largely the credibility that um, is something that you get because of having suffered. You see, because when he says, guys, we've got to forgive, nobody could say, you are being facile, you are talking glibly about forgiveness. What do you know about suffering? 27 years, you know. What did you think of his presidency and him as president? We couldn't have hope for anything, but I mean, that was a sort of person we needed. I mean, when you, when you look at what happened when we won the World Rugby Cup, when thousands of mainly Afrikaners could chant, Nelson, 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 for, for this man whom many had been vilifying as it, you, you realize, I mean, he had been able to get people to eat out of his hand. You make it sound as though he is somebody who shouldn't have stood down so soon, but should have stayed there. Yes, but it, it, it may be part of his greatness <laughs> that he, in fact, did stand down. I, I think that many would have said another term with him at the helm um, is what would have helped us uh, in a way, get over a hump. We've been having a great deal of negativity in the country, niggling this, niggling that. Uh, he, he, he has, he has, he has weaknesses like any other person. But I mean, they they are overshadowed by the the the, the glory of his uh, Ubuntu, his. Uh, humaneness. In his final years, as though making up for lost time, Mandela crisscrossed the country, supporting a range of projects dear to his heart. He's almost in a frenzy of opening a school here, opening a clinic over there. Uh, that it, it is a clue to the nature of the man, that He's understood, and I think that is part of what happened to him in, in Robben Island, that I am there, whatever I am is for the sake of others. And, and it drives him almost as a passion that 
he, there are things that he has got. And, and he knows then that it's not for self-aggrandizement. It's for the sake of others. And to meet the pretty girls and the film stars and the models and all the rest of it well, as well. Well, uh, enjoying good things is a wonderful preparation for heaven. <laughs>